one and all, I would be speaking on PCL avulsion fixations. We all know PCL avulsion uh, fractures are usually a consequence of a high velocity trauma, either a direct blow to the knee joint and the anterior aspect, or else an hyperextension injury. Uh, there have been various fixation modalities or various fixation techniques described in the past. Uh, popular among them is the open fixation of the PCL. Uh, we also have a certain non-medical journals, non non uh, allopathy journals, which also describe uh, certain bone setting uh, techniques of uh, fixing these uh, PCL avulsion fixations. Practice. So, I would be talking upon uh, arthroscopic fixation of uh, PCL, the surgical technique. We have a 35 year old gentleman who sustained a road traffic accident, a direct blow anteriorly to the knee joint, and uh, came to us after two weeks with, the, with this x ray and MRI. Uh, which showed significant displacement of the PCL. First thing what we do under anesthesia is evaluate and see for any form of a concomitant injuries, uh, typically that of the posterior lateral cardinal uh, injuries. Once that is ruled out, we would then uh, proceed with our arthroscopic uh, fixation technique. The standard modalities of uh, of uh, Diagnostic arthroscopy, the anteromedial, anterolateral portal, viewing portal, and the anteromedial portal. We see here that the ACL is floppy, saying that the PCL is sagging. I would then make a window between my ACL and PCL to introduce my telescope between the ACL and PCL into the posteromedial compartment and having a visualization of the posteromedial compartment. I would then establish my posteromedial portal, first introduce the needle, then the Wissinger rod, rod, and then introduce a seven millimeter scanula into uh, this portal of mine. Once I'm done with that, I would then make an entry into the posterolateral portal. I would use a, a posteromedial portal as the working portal. I use my a, a soft, smooth 3.5 shaver facing towards the joint and then resect the septum between the posteromedial and the posterolateral compartment. I would then under vision introduce my messenger rod from the posteromedial compartment into the soft spot of the posterolateral compartment, taking into um, a reference the head of the fibula uh, to make sure that I'm anterior to the posterior margin of the head of the fibula. I would then make a nick here, introduce my, uh, with, uh, pass through my messenger rod and then railroad my, uh, uh, my cannula inserter to make a smooth passing passage and then introduce a six millimeter cannula uh, to, and place it in situ. So I have a posteromedial portal, a posterolateral portal, which gives me a good access to the poster compartment of the knee joint. Uh, the posteromedial portal being the working portal here, uh, I, would, uh, I would then clear out the stump uh, then introduce, reintroduce my telescope into the postal anterolateral portal and then introduce another cannula into the postal medial portal. One would then take a, a suture shuttling device like a, a knee scorpion, load it with the fiber tape and take a self cinching bite through the base of the PCL and then retrieve it through the, through the cannula and we get a, a good self-cinching knot through the base of the, or the stump of the PCL. I would then introduce it into, uh, into the uh, medial side of the, into the lateral side of the, of the PCL and retrieve it into, through the posteromedial portal. I would similarly take another bite through uh, with another colored uh, non-absorbable suture and then introduce this uh, uh, sutures in between the PCL and the medial femoral condyle and once again retrieve it through the posteromedial portal. I would then introduce my PCL jig in between the ACL and PCL, uh, place it in, in on the side of the PCL insertion and then introduce my Beethman and drill a, a, a tunnel of 4.5 millimeters uh, with the 4.5 millimeters drill bit, making sure that we do not damage the posterior structure. This can well be prevented by using a simple scoop. I would then retrieve the suture, uh, one of the limbs of the sutures, um, um, through this tunnel. Similarly, I would make another tunnel on the farther side of the PCL, uh, similarly, retrieving another suture limb to this. This is a parallel configuration of which the uh, the suture passes are are retrieved. On the contrary, I would also uh, um, I could also take a crisscross uh, uh, 
uh, suture configuration and hence creating a suture bridge uh, which is then tied easily uh, with the uh, suture disc button. I will keep my knee 90 degrees of knee flexion while the while tensioned PCL is then uh, sutured over the uh, the sutures are sutured over the disc and we see here that the sagging PCL is no more, sagging ACL is no more sagging and we have a good taut ACL and a taut PCL uh, recreating the normal anatomy. A post-operative protocol, we usually keep the patients non-weight bearing for about three weeks time and then gradually increase the weight bearing 25% for the next three weeks and at the end of six weeks, 50% weight bearing and full weight bearing at the end of eight weeks. Uh, the range of movement is restricted to 0 to 60 degrees in the first three weeks. Further on, advancing the range of movement to a full range of movement at about 8 to 10 weeks duration. And at the end of uh, three months, one would see a full range of movement, uh, good quadriceps strength and uh, uh, knee with no PCL laxity. Thank you.